Hi, Madam Eileen Balloon Creations here, here to teach you some more beginning tips and tricks about balloons. You're going to want to take your 260 balloon and we're going to practice learning how to make bubbles out of our balloon. Now remember, these balloons are made from natural latex, which is the sap of the rubber tree. You only need two pumps of air. Make sure you have your nozzle long enough so you can tie around your fingers without your fingers hurting. And we're ready to begin. Now, these, we're gonna make bubbles of tree sap. Yes, when you take the tree sap and you turn it into a balloon, every time you make balloon animals, you're making bubbles of tree sap. Now, this is how you make a bubble. You have a part of your balloon that's called the nozzle and a part of the balloon that's called the tail. As you twist the okay. balloon, the air is going to escape down the length and fill up the tail and this tail is going to get shorter. Now, this is how you make a bubble. You can use your fingers and do bubbles of different sizes. One, two, three, four. I'm going to put down four fingers. See how they begin right here where the knot, right where the knot is on the book? Not the nozzle, but they start at the knot. Mm -hmm. I go over four fingers and then I pinch. You can make your fingers strong by just pinching the balloon. You have two hands and your hands have a job. One balloon will be the holding, pinching hand and your other hand is going to be the twisting, move the balloon hand. So, to make that bubble, you're going to pinch, grab your balloon, and twist. You can twist towards you, or you can twist away from you, as long as you can be consistent on the direction you twist. I prefer to twist towards me, but that's just me. You might have a better a feel for the balloons by twisting away from you, just as long as every time you make a twist, you twist away from you. The reason why this matters is if I twist towards me here and the next balloon I twist away from me, then the middle balloon is going in two different directions and it can just mess up your design. So choose which direction you want to twist. You also have what's known as the balloon twister's third hand. Yes, did you know that if you become a balloon twister, you'll get a third hand? Yes, this third hand is only for holding things. And it's usually on your holding hand. These last two fingers, your pinky and your ring finger, are your third hand. I've pinched and I twisted and I created a chamber of air right here. I've made a bubble of tree sap. Now I want to do some more bubbles down the length. And so I am going to take my third hand and I'm going to put that twist that I just made into the hand and then I'm going to close my fingers just a little bit to hold it. If I let go, this is what's going to happen. See, I'm opening up my fingers and it's wedged into my hand so it's not going to come undone. But when I remove my hand, boop, it comes undone. And sometimes your balloon will scar or just get a little bit bigger at that area because that part of the balloon has been stretched. Sometimes you can use this to your advantage. What if you want to make a wiggly worm? To make a wiggly worm, all you got to do is do a whole bunch of bubbles, let them go, and then you have all these little bumps and rouges and have an earthworm. It's really fun. I didn't put enough air in this to make an earthworm. I'm going to show you, uh, this is a practice. This is a good practice for learning to make bubbles of different sizes, or maybe you want to practice doing bubbles of the same size. So I'm going to figure out how big I want my bubble. Say what I want, I want my bubble small. I pinch, I use my holding hand to pinch. I use my twisting hand to twist. One, two, three, four, five. And then I'm going to hold it with my holding hand. And now I can use these two fingers, my thumb and my pointer finger, to pinch 
and then I twist. I'm not going to let go of this last bubble, but look at this. I now have two bubbles and they're not coming undone because this first bubble is being held by my third hand. Now to do my next bubble, I take my middle finger and my thumb and I hold that next bubble and I pinch here and I twist. Oh, hold on a moment. Okay, I had to answer the phone real quick. But look what I did. I used my twister hand to pinch the top. Sometimes I call this twist a joint. So this is a joint and this is a joint. And I have the first one grabbed with my fingers and I have the second one lightly grabbed with my other two fingers. So I'm using a total of four fingers to hold that while I do something with my hand. Now let's keep making bubbles. I'm going to slide this hand in and pinch and that way it's held and I just need to reach over pinch and twist pinch and twist pinch and twist you can take a coat hanger and round it and then you make several of these bubbles and wrap them around your coat hanger the more bubbles you make, the more length you use up. As you see, this tail has gotten shorter. I can keep making some small bubbles, but not too many more. But I still have plenty of room for air. Now there's a game the balloon twisters like to play. It's called, how many bubbles can you put in a balloon? So they inflate a 260 balloon and they have at it. I think I got up to 36 bubbles once and they were tiny. Okay, ready for some fun? Woo! And look at that. I let go of all the bubbles. Doesn't that look like the beginning of a wiggly worm? So now you know how to do earthworms. Earthworms have lots of small bubbles, and then they have a big bubble, and then they have lots of more small bubble segments. I'm going to chase, I'm going to pinch the tail, I'm going to chase some of the air back up into the balloon. Now we're going to see how many balloons, bubbles, how many bubbles we can put in this balloon. You want to start tiny and keep tiny. Also, to add more fun to it, the contest is timed. You're only given 60 seconds to put as many bubbles as possible into your balloon. The person who's able to do the most bubbles, of course, wins. I, I think I won third place against some other professionals who've been doing balloon twisting longer than me. In fact, you might have seen some of their videos. One of the beginner twister balloon videos that I ever watched on YouTube was done by Cody Williams, also known as Unica, U-N-I-C-A-W. He is funny. He is amazing. He rides unicycles and he wants, actually, actually he's done this several times. He's mastered. He can ride a unicycle, juggle with one hand while twisting a balloon dog with his other hand. Cody is amazing and an inspiration to me. He won first place at the balloon twisting bubble contest. Now, you've noticed I'm doing really, really tiny bubbles. And I have lots of balloon left and I'm running out of tail. The more times I twist around eats up that tail. But this is a very good exercise. It fills up time, but it also keeps your hands occupied. You might feel your hand getting tired. When balloon twisting, you need to exercise your hands and your forearms, just like you do with any sport. Now this, when you make a whole bunch of tiny bubbles, this is called a string of pearls. Love my necklace. Very accessorizable. 
You could tie it small and have a bracelet. Balloon accessories, balloon pearl necklace, a balloon pearl bracelet. But as you see, for all the little bubbles I'm doing, I just have way too much air in this balloon. If I let some air out, I can twist some more. But right now we're gonna call it quits. Now how, how do you tie it off into a necklace? If you don't twist the balloon around enough, these, like if you only have one or two twists on each of these joints, it can unroll and come undone on you. But to end it, I take the knot, I grab the knot, not the nozzle, I grab the knot, and I take the knot and I wrap it around the last joint in one direction, and then I wrap it around the joint of the other direction. Now, if your hands are tired, when the balloon, when we're done with our balloon and we have some left over, the best way to get rid of it is I pinch the tail so I get a little piece of balloon and I take my scissors and I snip that little piece of balloon. Now, if I let it go suddenly, it could pop. Balloon twisters, we don't like popping. No, we do not. So I open and close very gently. Do you see that powder? That's talcum powder. Now once it's soft enough, I can just let go. So when balloons are released slowly, they don't explode. Also, if you cut a part of the balloon that's not inflated, it will not explode. It just hisses out. I'll show that. But I wrapped it around, and once I wrapped it around, I did, I tied a knot, just like you tied your shoe. You put a finger down to make a space, you go crisscross, and then you wrap one side of the balloon around the other and give a gentle pull. If you give a hard pull, you're going to create friction. Friction is heat, and heat melts things. And this is just tree sap. It's going to heat that up. And here I go. I now have a beautiful balloon necklace. I have sequins on my hat, so let's see if I can get these on without popping them on my sequin hat. You know what? I'm going to take my hat off. Hats off to you guys. This is, you, you're very brave if you got gotten this far with your balloons already. Balloons can be scary. I don't lie about that. But when you know what you're doing, then it's not as scary as much. So there we go. I now have a balloon necklace. So practice making bubbles of different sizes or just making your own string of pearls. It's great practice and it makes your hands stronger so you can twist more fantastic balloons. I'm going to teach a little, oh, was there something else I was going to do with bubbles? Hmm. I don't remember what it is. I did show you a little, oh yeah, I was going to do a wiggle worm. What color are worms? Are they pink? Are they brown? You know what? I'm going to do a brown. Yes, we're going to do a brown worm. Now, when you get serious about balloon twisting, you might want to get an electric inflator. They are so much fun. And if, if a child has a hard time inflating the balloon with a hand pump, they do sell small, small balloon inflators. When using a balloon inflator, it has a nozzle. That's where I'm gonna put the nozzle of the balloon on. I pinch the nozzle just like I do my hand pump. And then I push the activation button. That's how I inflate with my inflator. But again, you end up sometimes, or many times, with too tiny of a tail. You need to pinch a bubble, let the air out, and now you can wrap 
that easily around your fingers and through the loop that going around the fingers creates and then get your fingers out and then now it's sealed and now we're going to do balloon twisting for the worm so i'm going to pinch and roll the more times you roll the better of a impression it'll leave on the balloon you can see my coat rack back there Also, the longer it holds, the better. I might have <laughs> too much air in the balloon. Now, your eyes might say that this balloon is about to pop. But your fingers, your fingers will feel if it's going to pop. So you always want to go by how a balloon feels. And if you're scared about balloon twisting, but you really want to try, close your eyes. There's no shame in closing your eyes because some balloon twisters, we close our eyes. Oh yeah, if our fingers think it's going to go, but we're going to try to push it, we close our eyes. So if the balloon artist is closing their eyes, watch out. I might be able to get one more in this. See, no more tail. It's all fully inflated. I think I'm going to let this go. Little by little. So there's bumpy, 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 bump. Then here's a clear section here. I chase the air back in. Twist, stitch. You can always get this end part. This is the boring part. This is just experimenting and playing and having fun that other balloon worked out really really good so there we go we have a wiggly worm wiggly earthworm it's brown and if we want it to curl wrap it around your arm and rub it remember heat will change things. So, there we go. We've curled our wiggly worm. And then you can take a marker. Marker, marker. Where did my markers go? I have lots of markers because I'm always misplacing them. Well, I found my blue marker. Don't know where my black, oh, and now I found my, here's my black marker. This is the, one of the easiest things to balloon twist. You can do earthworm or you can call them snakes. You can just draw a happy face. Draw big eyes. You can even do eyebrows. Happy face. We could have him laughing with his mouth open. If you like, you could... Just draw some lines to emphasize that your worm is segmented. So that is how you create bubbles in a balloon. And all balloon animals are a series of bubbles. That's all they are, bubbles that are then connected together. Happy twisting! Get those fingers nice and strong because we're going to have some fun stuff next. I'm going to show techniques that you need to know about. And if you can't do the technique, that's okay. There are so many designs to make and twist that just skip that, skip that technique until you're ready. And one day you'll try it and it just works wonderfully. Or if you want a fun challenge and drive yourself insane, go for the good hard techniques. Well, anyways, happy twisting, my young twisters.